Oh, this is kind of a weird angle, but that's okay. Hello, this is Shauna Bremenkamp with SolaGratiaLife.com, where together we as women are pursuing a life of holiness by grace alone. And today in this video, we're continuing the daily devotional uh, audio recordings of past weekly and daily devotionals that I wrote to uh, send to my email, email subscribers. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole spiel about what this playlist is all about. And um, you could just watch the previous videos in this daily devotional playlist for an explanation on that. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Oh, a quick update before we get into that. Let me show you what my baby book looks like now at 22 weeks. So this is baby's getting nice and big and um, yeah and I really love this dress by the way. It's so comfy. It's so I feel pretty and feminine and like a cute mama in it and it's probably my favorite dress so far um, but yeah I'm dressed up kind of because uh, hubby and I just went on a um, spontaneous movie date and it was really cool we saw um, an action comedy called Argyle I think it was a fun movie um, it wasn't great but it was entertaining enough to um, you know get us out of the house for a couple hours and uh, do something different. So I um, can't tell you the last time we went on a movie date, um, not because we didn't want to, but just because it's been so cold and snowy outside. Plus, um, there hasn't been a lot of good movies uh, in the theaters lately, so that coupled with the cold weather we didn't really have reason to go to the movies but today we really really wanted to go out to see a movie so we did and we're both glad that we did so now let's get right into the daily devotional this is a devotional that I wrote back in August 2nd 2023 and it is uh, it remains in the theme freedom in Christ. And this is day three of that theme, uh, that weekly theme, freedom in Christ. This devotional is titled, Your New Identity. So here we go. Wait, is this really? Okay. Just had to make sure I was in the right place, sorry. Uh, the scripture we're going to look at is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. And this salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about, when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. They were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eager, eagerly watching these things happen. So, one of the key ideas in first peter is to maintain a life of holiness as the appropriate response of gratitude for the gracious miracle of our salvation this salvation was promised through the old testament prophets and the angels were eagerly awaiting or eagerly watching other translations say long for and investigating each person's salvation story uh, as each person's salvation story is unfolding, the angels are eagerly watching. 
Isn't it amazing that your salvation was anticipated by the prophets of old? They had given their messages by God, or they were, they were given their messages by God and were not to keep it for themselves, but for all the generations that come after them. And that's you and that's me. It is all so wonderful of a love and rescue and redemption story that even the angels are eagerly awaiting people to be saved. Are angels happy for us personally when we get saved? It is incredibly likely, but evidence in the Bible makes it more precise to conclude that the angels' enthusiasm is for people to be saved, to gather up a people for Jesus. Everything the Father does is for him. All glory and praise goes to Jesus because he is more than worthy, for he alone is holy, for he is God. Another key idea in 1 Peter is that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ provides a foundation of our new identity in him. No longer are we children of wrath slaves to sin, headed for hell, but a new creation redeemed for our master. See 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 through 19 and 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 for more support on that. His victory over sin and death, saving us from the wrath of the Father, ought to give us hope and confidence in this life because of the life to come. As redeemed creatures in Christ, we no longer live for the world, but for eternal things. As such, we are to bear good fruit and imitate Christ, especially in the midst of persecution. And that good fruit is not something that we produce in and of ourselves, but the Holy Spirit produces in us when we are fully surrendered to the Lordship of Christ over our hearts and our lives. As our hearts are being transformed more into Christ's likeness, it will show in our lives. We will cheerfully and genuinely give up the things of this world, entertainment, language, etc., and seek out the things that keep our eyes fixed on Him. We will hunger for the Word every day and to go deeper into the gospel that saved, empowers, and sustains us. If this does not sound like you, don't fret. You may merely be in a season of pruning and dryness. That doesn't mean necessarily that you aren't saved just because you're not bearing fruit right now. Ask the Lord to grant you repentance for loving the things of this world more than honoring Him, whether it's ourselves, our preferences, our comfort, um, material things, uh, whatever it is, if we are preferring anything and prioritizing and elevating or worshiping anything with our time, our thoughts, our resources, our energy over the Lord, repent. I've had to do that many times in my life, and I, I've had to do that a couple times this week. There's no shame in that. It's all part of God's refining fire, His mighty work of sanctification in our hearts and in our lives. That's the Christian walk. Ask God to refresh you with the living water and to help you become ever more marveled at the holiness of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. Ask God to help you find balance between stewarding well the things he has given you and putting him first. Ask God to help you do everything with excellence as unto him. You have a new identity, and that is to be set apart from this world and set apart for him to be used by him in whatever ordinary or outstanding ways that he sees fit. Now here are some questions to ask yourself and questions I've asked myself. What is something today that you ought to give up in order to honor the Lord more? 
Or what can you pare down in order to honor the Lord more? See if you can either pare down or give it up for at least 30 days. Here's the second question. Did you realize the depth of having a new identity? What are some concepts you'd like to study in the Bible to go deeper into what this new identity means? And to answer this question, I'm curious, go ahead and leave me a comment down below what your answer is to that question. If you'd rather keep it private, of course, you're more than you have every right to. Um, but for those of you that want to share, go ahead and leave a comment. Third question, how often do you ask God to direct your steps in order to honor him? If this is a new thing for you, start building the habit with something small, such as saying a quick prayer in your mind before going into a work meeting. Um, if you can think of any other examples, go ahead and leave me a comment. And now here's our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for my salvation. I am so grateful that I have been deemed a new creation in you, Jesus, and that I get to spend eternity with you in fullness of glory one day. Father, I ask for your forgiveness if I unwittingly failed to put you first, choosing my job, my to-do list, my way of doing things, over seeking after your heart in order to surrender to your rule over every detail of my life. I repent. Grant me true repentance, Lord. I want to see good fruit, not for my sake, but for the benefit of others and most of all for your glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So that's it for this daily devotional. This is day three of the theme Freedom in Christ, your new identity. Next video will be day four and I'll see you then. Thank you so much for sticking with me.